Welcome everybody to the Backwoods University. Today's class is going to be another class in uh, the bow and arrow. This is going to be an advanced class. Uh, it might be helpful if you didn't see the previous intermediate uh, class to watch that first. Uh, Mark has agreed to stop by again uh, and help us out. So uh, let's get started. Thanks, Brian. Well, before we start the class on aiming today, I want to give you a brief description to try to understand back tension, how, how we use it and what it is. So just to give you a quick uh, understanding of that, if you, if you take your arms and extend them out like so, and keep going, keep going until you can't go any further. At this point, your, your back muscles, your um, shoulder blades, are somewhat pinched together. You want to keep them pinched together right through the follow through of your shot. So at this point, turn towards the target, which would be your bow hand side, and bend your elbow like so. I notice I cannot reach my anchor point because I don't have 12 inch fingers. So somehow I have to get my hand up there. Your tendency, my tendency would be to come like this and keep the elbow more on the horizontal level. We want to avoid that. The way to get there to hold and maintain the skeletal structure of our frame, our bones, would be to do this, up with the elbow. And now you're still in alignment, and so that would be your optimum position each and every time you shoot, is to try to get to this point. Background, we got uh, some folks nearby uh, running some chainsaws. But uh, Mark and I decided uh, that as long as you can hear uh, Mark speaking, that we're going to continue with the video. Uh, sorry, but uh, you can't always control things. So uh, hopefully everybody uh, can uh, still hear the video and still uh, they can still find it helpful. Uh. Okay, one thing that I like to do when I'm practicing is I will assign certain body parts to a task such as my bow arm has the tendency to be a little sloppy and not follow through so I will assign it with a task to stay put until I tell you it can move. My head, I have a tendency to drift back at anchor and, and move a little bit and not keep it still so my head I imagine it's in a vise, I become the statue and it stays put again and the chin is, is in the position I started with which is a low position all the time. Those work for me. Another cool one is, is I assign my index finger to a task, and that is, this becomes a stick match, a wooden match, and the tip is right there. And when I'm at anchor, I will strike the match across the cheek, and there's a little tea candle right here, and I will strike the match and light the tea candle. That is my release thought. And there's, there's thought behind that. My tendency is to light the tea candle touch the shoulder, but I have a flaw where I have a tendency to come in a little bit of an arc, so it looks good I'm following through, but I took the wrong path to get there. You want to follow a straight path back. So again, light the candle, light, light the match, light the candle, and that should be done without thinking about it. You want to do it sort of like when you have a Band-Aid on your arm, and if you're going to peel it off, you're, oh, that's going to hurt. And they always say, well, pull it off fast. Just pull that Band-Aid off and get it over with. Same with your release. You don't want to do it so much in slow motion. Just get it done. And the momentum will help that string just flick right off your fingers in a wonderful way. This might really work for you. I'm actually becoming a better shooter by preparing for these classes because I've gotten a little bit sloppy with my release and it's getting better on account of sharing with you guys. So now the fun part, aiming. One point that's very important to realize that as you use your arrow as a point of aim, particularly before the draw, as you start to draw, the arrow gets shorter and shorter, and you don't want to get into a glancing contest where you're constantly checking down with your primary vision, and it gets shorter and shorter, and then you readjust. Avoid that and be aware that it does get shorter, and we're not going to use the arrow length at its shortest all the time. We might be using it at 
full extension or you might be using it in but not both. So one thing that I find very important and, and quite a few archers do is the very first arrow out of your bow at the practice range or stump shooting, whatever. If you over challenge yourself or don't put enough thought into that first shot and you miss by a, a, a large margin of error, that is one of the most negative reinforcing things you can do to your archery accuracy. So I wanna encourage you to put a little thought into your first arrow and don't overextend your boundaries. If it's five yards, 10 yards, 15 yards, humble yourself and do it to, to reinforce positive thoughts. Okay, back to aiming. Using the tip of your arrow as a reference for the trajectory, there's a couple ways you can do it. One would be to come to, to full draw and then use your arrow as a reference at full draw for the trajectory. And the other way would be prior to draw, where you set the estimated height, gap it, then draw. Those are a couple ways that I'm aware of. Yeah. So years back, uh, 20 some odd years ago, I was at the practice range and Dick Glenna, world champion 3D longbow archer, he comes up, no warm-ups, pulls out a wooden arrow out of his quiver, 30-yard target, puts it right in the black, puts another one on the string, right in the black. Like, how the heck do you do that? It would take me a lot of warm-ups at close range to get the confidence to try a shot like that back then. So one day I asked Dick, I said, how, how can you deliver an accurate arrow at 30 yards cold turkey, just like no warm-ups? And he simply said that he does a lot of practicing and because of that, he knows right where to hold. I said, okay. So that sparked my interest for myself to try to seek out ways that could aid my instincts to take a little bit of the guesswork out of the shot. Just a reminder that we don't look down at our arrow. We're fully aware of it but we don't glance down at it. It's, it's called our secondary or peripheral vision. So don't get into a, a, a bad habit of double checking, double checking. That will drive you nuts and rob you of your accuracy. So one thing worth mentioning is in order for this technique of gap shooting to work, we need to have consistent chin height because that will affect our dominant eye and in relationship to the tip of the arrow and also you want to have all arrows of the same length because that will change the perception of of the gap if you have a real short arrow then a real long arrow so that's something you want to keep in mind so a couple guys asked why is this guy's arrow so long in relationship to his draw length and there's a story behind that so i bought these carbon gold tip 500s and they come at 33 inches and what I was doing was bare shaft tuning that's where you have an arrow without any fletching no feathers and you progressively shorten it and shorten it until it flies beautiful out of your bow with, without any fletching and there's YouTube's you can check out on how to do that we're not going to talk in detail about that today so start off with 33 inches and chopped off an inch, tried it out. Oh my gosh, it was flying like a dart. Now what do I do? I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting to get closer to the 29 inch range. So I thought, well, I'll give it a try and see what the sight picture looks like. Well, wouldn't you know it, at full draw, my arrow tip was dead on. I could use it like a sight at 25 yards. At 20 yards, I'm about four inches below. 15 yards, six inches below. And at 10 yards, eight inches. This is the perfect scenario for my hunting strategies and I will stick with this and that's how this evolved. All right, arrow color. What in the world would that matter? It's not just a fashion statement, guys. I choose lighter shafts for a reason and it helps my secondary vision to pick up those, um, the, the shaft in dark light conditions, a dark hemlock or pine forest or early in the morning or towards the evening. One day my friend John and I were out shooting and he asked me to try one of his arrows to see how it flew out of my bow. 
I said sure. Snapped it on a sprint on the string. There's a 3D target out there a little ways and just doing my normal thing. I raised up and it was like the arrow disappeared. This dark brown arrow on a brown deer. What in the world? And it, at that point I realized that it really helps your aid your instincts to have an arrow that is um, pleasant to, to pick up with your secondary. So keep that in mind guys. Okay, well, the vertical line, what that is, is that is your line where you miss to the right, miss to the left, or keep it right on the line. Very important. So a story that might send the, send the arrow home here would be, uh, pun intended by the way, <laughs> is one day at the archery club, after dark, we had a fun night where uh, 25 or 30 guys showed up, and women and kids, to um, have a nice social, and we tried to shoot the flame out of a candle in the dark. So everyone shot, and everybody missed. We we're about 15, 17 yards out, and then it was my turn, and okay, Mark, show us how it's done, and I snuffed out the candle. But I had a little trick that I did. See, and I was running this event, I practiced. So, uh, after that shot, my son, my daughter, my buddy John, his son, they, they all asked me like, hey, how, how'd you do that, you know? So, I shared that with them. They all put out the flame. We were the stars, and, and now I'm gonna share that tip with you guys. So, what I did is I would extend out and just sway back and forth and let the reflective glare of the candle shine on the top of my shaft. And just kind of hone in on that and then raise up like a plumb line in line with the candle, draw straight back. It worked wonderfully. And we, we called it the waggle, the waggle. So you might want to even consider adding that to your day, daytime shooting. Why, why start up over here when the target is over there? If you can come up on a line, you're coming in an anchor, everything's perfect. You don't even have to think about it. Just, just bam, let it go. No pause needed. Okay, the horizontal line, that is your ups and downs. Ups and downs, misses or accuracy. And this is where it gets really cool. There's two ways that I know that you can do this, actually three. And uh, one of which we mentioned before where you can use the tip of your arrow at full draw and learn those distances. If you shoot split finger, the, the normal thing that happens there is it's more difficult. You're going to have a larger gap at close range, but it's your advantage for longer distance shots. If you shoot three fingers below like I do, it really helps with the arrow being closer to the target at close range. And this will vary according to your draw length, your arrow length, the poundage of your bow. So you have to dial this in to suit your specific equipment. Okay, another way to, to aim is to set the gap before you start your draw. So basically you'll extend out like so and pivot with your waist for the gap. And so get up to about 10 yard target and put it where you think, okay, I can hit, that's about the perfect height and observe where your arrow tip is. So right now I'm seeing my arrow about eight or 10 inches below the spot I wanna hit and I'm gonna draw back at a level and let it go and I hit. So that means my gap in here is, is it's about nine inches. I'm very close. So for you, you want to get to 10 yards, take a shot, recognize that gap, and then confirm it with five, six, seven shots. Say, okay, 10 yards, I've got a gap of 12 inches or four inches, whatever it is. Once you know that you own that gap, proceed to maybe 15 yards, try it out, own it, maybe 20 yards, own it, and that will really put you on the fast track aiding your instincts so your brain isn't scrambling with all these misses and trials and errors it's very good perfect practice which leads to perfect performance so 
one thing to keep in mind, this gap shooting, we don't want to get it into a glancing contest. You're simply aiding your instincts, particularly with setting up the gap before the draw. You've just helped your instincts, like this is about the height I want to be, you draw back. As you're coming into anchor, you want to be thinking to yourself, I want to hit right there. And the smaller spot you pick to hit, the better off you're going to be. And one little uh, game that I play, it's a, it's a mind game, but there's times I'll be shooting in the basement at 10 or 12 yards, that's all the distance I have, and I want to hit a really small spot. It's maybe the size of my fingernail. And I'm all around it, I just can't hit that spot. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll trick myself into saying there's, that spot is going to magically change colors between when I let go of the string and the arrow gets there. And if I can name that color, I get $1,000. So lo and behold, there are so many times that that's all it takes is to get me to hit that spot. And I believe what it is, is the concentration. I'm a little bit of a daydreamer and that helps me to lock in on that spot and that keeps you in line with it. And also it helps me to follow through it's an excellent little trick. It, it works for me, it might work for you too. So one thing that is rather important with practice and gap shooting is to shoot at a variety of different targets at different elevations, different distances, um, uphill, downhill, level, in the woods, with undulating terrain. 60 years ago or so, when my Uncle Wally was, was young, he had a recurved bow and was gonna do his first year of white-tailed deer hunting. He practiced behind that barn, as the story is told, every single day. He had that bale of hay back there with a deer target on it, and he was ready as ever. And finally, here comes the season, first day nothing, second day, here comes that buck, and he's so excited. He pulled up his bow to draw, and <laughs> what the first thing that came to his mind? Where's the barn? <laughs> he, he missed by about three feet, he said. His whole sight picture was just goofy. <laughs> so keep that in mind, guys. <laughs> God bless you, Uncle Wally. <laughs> well, thanks for stopping by the university today, and sorry for the inconvenience of some of the background noise, but we'll just deal with it. And. Um, Hopefully these tips will help you. Everyone shoots a little different. Take what you can and use it. Throw the rest away. It's, we're, we're all unique. And um, if you have any questions, please send them in so we can address those. And we, we'll all learn as we go here. Have a wonderful day.